Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. It's Kyle Connor and I'm here with my friend and colleague, Tom Malagany. There you go. I can never say your name right, so I had you do it. <laughs> Nobody uh, does. <laughs> Let's uh, talk about this. This is the new 2020, is it? 2020 Mini Cooper SE. The SE, so the electric of the F56 generation mini hardtop. Uh, now, Tom is an X electric mini owner, and I am an X mini owner like six times over. I actually, I had the classic mini right hand drive. I had a rally car countryman, uh, hard tops, I had GPs. I love minis. And so finally we have one that's electric. Yeah. So I, I ha as, as you mentioned, uh, I wasn't an uh, electric mini owner. I was an electric mini leasee. That's right. You could nobody, not buy Nobody them. could buy the car. So, um, uh, some people remember back in 2009, uh, BMW really ran the program. BMW owns many. They made 450 uh, fully electric Mini Coopers. They called it the Mini E, and they use it as a pilot program around the world. They had these in five or six different countries. Uh, the biggest uh, program they had was here in the US. They had some of them on the East Coast, some of them on the West Coast. I was one of the people that was in that program, and I had the distinction of driving my Mini E further than any of the other 450 Mini E's. I drove it 75,000 miles in two years, so which, which 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 was hard to do back then. Yeah, no because, DC fast charging. Yeah, there was no public infrastructure, not just DC fast charging. There was not a single public. Uh, charging station in the state of New Jersey. So it was, you know, <laughs> you were really tethered to that leash. But yeah. uh, 10 I, years I, later, it's crazy yeah. how much has Look, changed. I just drove this car from New Jersey down to North Carolina. Yeah, 500 miles. Yeah, almost 500 miles. And, uh, you know, in a car that has the shortest range of any electric vehicle available today, we'll, we'll get into that later. But, um, and the infrastructure, it's possible today. That's we were passing that, chargers on the way down. Like we it, did not even stop at every DC charger. If I ever tried to do that in my Mini E in 2009, I'd <laughs> You'd still, still be, in Jersey. be on the road. And I'd be <laughs> ringing doorbells, asking people if I could plug into their like outdoor socket. Right. You know, so, but anyway, we've come a long way. Um, but has this car come a long way? That's one of the questions that we're gonna try to find out with our driving reviews and talking about it now because right. on the surface, the cars look very similar to the car that I had in 2009. Right, the yours was the R56 generation. This exactly. is the F, but it's um, externally, it looks just like the gas mini, yeah. which yours did. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole point of this video is it's just gonna be Tom and I going around the car on the lift. We're gonna lift it up, look underneath it, talk a lot of about just the technical aspects of the car, the trim levels, things like this. And then of course, we'll be doing a full road and track review. Um, so Tom, this is the cheapest new electric vehicle in the US. Yes. I think so. Yeah. And it is the lowest range EV at 110 miles EPA. Yes. And so you've already driven the car. I drove up yesterday and, and basically did 80% of the drive down with you and was in bold. your model three right i followed along uh, and i was super impressed with the highway range you got out of this yeah so talk a little bit about what you experienced just on the drive down sure so we were tooling along at anywhere between 70 and 80 miles an hour yeah sometimes over too so, sometimes but over 80 allegedly yeah we weren't <laughs> we weren't trying to extend the range i was just driving it normally yeah you as, didn't have it in green mode anymore. or anything no i didn't have it in the green mode I, I left it in the regular mid um mode i didn't have it in sport though but i, I had it in the in the in the mid driving range and we pretty much were averaging a little over 100 miles per charge, which is only a touch under the 110 mile EPA range. It's rating. amazing. I've we, never seen a car that get that close on the highway. You wouldn't expect that from on the highway. We were my original plan. I was planning on making at least one more stop at the Electrify America charging station. So I right. didn't think I'd be able to go 90 miles in between stops, but I was able to. And one of the reasons you were able to go so far in between stops was the charging profile on the car. Mm -hmm. Now, typically, if you watch any of my out of spec motoring road trip videos, you know, I charge to 50% or whenever the car tapers mm -hmm. and then I'm off to the next. But this didn't start to slow charging off peak rates of about 50 kilowatt until 77%. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much are getting to 80% state of charge. There's no reason to leave early. Exactly. And so at that point, we've just stretched it. Maybe we'll go up to 90 for an extra three or four minutes and yep. push it to the next charger. And so you're really doing some deep cycles of this battery. Mm -hmm. um, 
which makes road trips not that bad. I mean, it really masks the range in that case. It's cool. But you have to understand with such a small battery, that charging profile is necessary. You oh, 100%. You can't taper down at 40% on a car that you only have 29 kilowatt hours of usable energy. So, you know, they, they you know, to Minnie's credit, they recognize that yeah, and made sure huge. that the car will charge at the full rate, the 50 kilowatt rate up until 75, over 75%. So, um, you know, that makes it bearable. It still isn't the ideal road trip car, let's face it. No, um, you know, but uh, if you yeah. had to for the couple times a year, go to the beach exactly. or the mountains, this can do that. You can do that as long as the network is there. I mean, the, the DC fast chargers aren't everywhere yet. But on the coasts, they're but pretty good. On the good. coasts, they are. And from here, driving from New Jersey, North Carolina was no problem. Yeah, super easy. Um, before we dive into this particular car, let's talk about the trim levels available mm -hmm. on the mini electric. So base price is 29900 Yeah. Okay, and that is for the signature model. Right. So what is that? include what do you get and uh we'll talk about this car but this thing has everything pretty yeah. much so this is the iconic trim which is the highest trim um mini starts out with signature trim which actually is one level higher than what their gas cars start out at so the base model of the mini cooper se is actually like a mid-range appointed gasoline mini cooper so that starts at 29.9 here in the U.S. And for that, you get a 6.9 inch navigation screen. You get comfort access as standard. You get the driving assistant with full, uh, forward collision warning, which is really good for to be standard on a car. And it comes with 16 inch wheels and the basic uh, sound system. Uh, for $4,000 extra, you get the Signature Plus. Now with Signature Plus, you get bigger wheels. They're 17 inch wheels and you get to choose from a couple different options. Uh, and, and that are all the same price. Uh, the, the interior, you get a cloth, a cloth leatherette that's two-toned. It's black and gray, whereas this, the uh, regular signature trim, it's just black. Uh, it comes with the panoramic sunroof, an automatic garage doper, door opener, and you get the Harman Kardon sound system. So for $4,000, that's a pretty good bump up. If you want to pay another $3,000, so it's $7,000 over the signature price, you get Iconic which is what this is. And it's pretty much everything that you can get on the car, everything from the other packages, plus you get more 17 inch wheel choices, uh, the, the ones that are a little bit um, uh, more higher end. You get the uh, full le leather interior. It comes with the parking assistant. The center display is larger. It's an 8.8 .8 inch center display instead of the 6.5 inch on the Signature and Signature Plus. It has a, a heads up display that kind of pops up out of the dashboard. It's like the Hyundai Kona. If anyone has seen the Hyundai Kona EV, the, what yep, the heads up display is. It's just like that in the top yeah, one. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, shine on the windshield. It goes on this little uh, plastic display that pops up out of the dashboard. And you also get the Mini Yours leather steering wheel, which a lot oh, of Mini so fans nice. love. I love it. <laughs> With the iconic trim. It's made of the same leather they put in the Rolls Royce steering wheels. Oh, Fun there fact, go. there you I go. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> so I will share my personal opinions about these packages. You either get a base one, which I think I would recommend to most people, uh, or you just max it out. So basically, I'm a big fan of sunroof, Harman Kardon sound system, uh, I love that the, the active driving assistant forward collision warning is standard. I think that's needed on every car. And I'm a huge fan of the big nav screen. Yeah. I just think it looks kind of silly with the smaller one. Um, but is that a $7,000 problem? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, so I, I would actually probably just recommend get some base ones of these. The sunroof's nice. Everything's kind of nice. But at the end of the day, this is the least expensive new EV. Mm -hmm. It is sort of not a do it everything kind of car because road trips are doable, but still tough. Mm -hmm. It's mostly a commuter. Just get a base one is my opinion. What do you think? I agree. Um, if, 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 if I'm getting this car, I'm probably going to get the base model, take advantage of whatever tax incentives you can. Right. In New Jersey, where I live, this would qualify for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. Plus we just started a cash on the hood state rebate where you get $25 for every mile of electric range that EVs get. So this being only at 110, I think that calculates to like 2,700, I could be wrong. Yeah, that. something so, like that. Something yep. like that. But we're talking between the federal and the state, more than 10 grand off. And in New Jersey, BEVs are sales tax exempt. 
So I could roll out of the dealership with this for under $20,000. Yeah, that's crazy. That's so a lot I, of car I, for the I, money. I think that's where you go with this because when you get to the iconic, yeah, all that stuff's really cool. The bigger display, the Harman Kardon, the, the panoramic, some of this is all stuff that you kind of want. But now the car is, it's, it's almost $40,000. Yeah, you at know, that point, it's a lot so of money. So now you're looking at competing with, model cars, for crying out loud, a base Model 3. Yeah. So, you know, it's a tough, it's a tough value proposition at that. But as the base value proposition, it works. You have to be a mini fan to go for the top trim. No. And I think, uh, even though I, I, like I mentioned, I love minis, I would even be swayed into the base one, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, I'm going to take everyone on the, around for like a tour, but before I do that, I want to talk about these <laughs> wheels. Now, these wheels are designed to look like a UK plug socket. I think they look awful, personally. Um, but here's the best part about these <laughs> wheels. On the window sticker, I kid you not, the wheel option name for these 17-inch wheels are the Corona spoke wheels. <laughs> Talk about bad timing. Yeah, I oh. feel bad for Minnie on that one. I know it was not intentional, but yeah. that it had to be pointed out. Yeah. So um, that's pretty bad. So while we're in the back of the car, let's start here charging the vehicle. So come on over. I'll show you a little bit about this. In the gas cap itself, you have an embossed plug looking logo uh, and when you open it up of course you have uh, j1772 and ccs uh, it will do 50 kilowatt peak charging rates and um, this is an interesting design because it's set really far back in the car and it's on an angle facing up so basically to plug it in you kind of have to lift up the bottom of the plug and, and aim it in there i found it to be a little bit difficult uh, based on what i'm used to but i think just uh, like any car these little quirks come with time. And minis are definitely quirky vehicles, but they're extremely premium as well. Coming off the back, you have a little bit of a lip spoiler up here, which looks nice. And it is the only Cooper S trim that doesn't come with the dual center exit exhaust for obvious reason. So you have this nice diffuser that goes all the way across, parking sensors, and then you have the beautiful Union Jack rear tail lamps. The brake light and the turn signal are the same unit, which kind of looks weird from the back. Um, the brake light flashes, there's no separate amber turn signal, but most cars are this way, Tesla's this way as well, so not a huge, huge deal. Other noticing uh, points that this is an electric, you have the yellow trim inside the Cooper S and an electric badge on the other side as well. But, but off a of first glance, you can drive this car and no one would know that this is the electric version. So when you come around to the front, it's just standard mini, of course, it's a F56 chassis, so everything is uh, standard. This is the LCI trim, which means uh, life cycle impulse or the dot two generation. So you have the brand new matrix LED headlights that are currently coded to do auto high beams on this particular car. Um, but in Europe, they'll do this cool like uh, light moving thing and black out the car uh, coming towards you so you can retain high beams that I believe can be coded aftermarket, sort of not legal in the US. Um, you also have this grill with no real air intakes except this little slot. I mean, these cars really don't require much cooling. Even on the drive down yesterday after all the DC fast charging sessions, not once did a fan kick on to cool this battery. Pretty impressive. Uh, the hood itself, big clamshell design but it's all standard mini. It still retains the hood scoop from the gas car, um, but just like the gas car, it doesn't do anything. It's there just for looks. Let's come around to this side. Now, as mentioned, this particular one is the iconic trim. Uh, I'm not sure if this is standard or not will look, but there's little puddle lights. So when you unlock the car, it shines mini on the ground, which is kind of cool. Comfort access is standard, of course. Inside, this one has the satellite gray trim, which I think is absolutely beautiful. It has the new mini digital display on the screen, which is currently not lit up, but I'll overlay some footage of that. And um, being this is a automatic trim and not a manual, can't get a manual in an electric car yet or ever, there's no need. There is the new style mini shifter. And of course you have different driving modes. You have sport, mid, green, and green plus similar to i3s no different there and two different levels of regenerative braking uh, so you have high and low and the car defaults to high every time you turn it on so this is what it looks like under the hood now if you remove this plastic cover what we see is the power electronics and the electric motor this is a front wheel drive car one of the things that i found was interesting was see this tubular frame 
It goes all the way down around the motor and around the power electronics. Many had to have this engineered to be like a, um, uh, for crash uh, structure integrity. The motor, the gas motor is part of the crash structure of the vehicle. So when you remove that gasoline motor, all of a sudden now the Mini wouldn't perform well in, in front crashes. So they had to engineer this tubular frame. It's, it's really hefty. It goes all the way down. I know you can't see it with the camera. It like encircles the whole power electronics and front, and front motor and it keeps the car safe in frontal impacts. And now you join me underneath the electric Mini Cooper SE, I guess it really would be called. A uh, lot of good uh, plastic shielding under here. Of course, you have your aero guards. Uh, it all looks fairly standard all, until we get to here. Now, normal minis have your exhaust going down, or in the case of a Clubman or Countryman, you have your drive shaft because they're all wheel drive. In this case, this is the battery pack. Now, it has this really cool material under here. I'm not sure if it's to prevent against scraping or for noise insulation, but the whole battery itself is a giant T. So it is narrow going back, and as it gets into the underfloor storage of the trunk, they filled that up with a battery pack, and it's about 33 kilowatt hours, uh, 29 usable, fairly sizable battery pack to fit in, a, in an existing architecture uh, of a gas car. So I think they did a really good job with this. Uh, front wheel drive, of course, and it doesn't spin the tires off the line, hooks up really well, so that is definitely impressive. Let's look at this in the rear. So under here, you can see they have the most uh, sizable portion of the battery in the rear, which means that the weight balance on this car, I assume, is going to be closer to 50-50 than the normal Mini. So we'll see how that affects handling later on. Um, and then this whole rear diffuser needed to be designed for the electric. You can see that it uh, has some water exit points here. I don't think you'll be seeing rocks or stuff get caught in this. It's fairly soft and pliable plastic, so I think that should be okay, no problems there. Other than that, it's all kind of fairly standard as the gas one. Uh, I brought my friend Chris, who owns G3 Automotive in Raleigh. It's a popular BMW tuning facility and, and maintenance shop, just to look under here, and he was very impressed with how they stuffed everything in and uh, how normal and consistent it really is with the internal combustion variants. So good job to Mini to not have to change much to make this electric. So now that we've seen around the Mini, taking a look at some of the highlights, I am really impressed with the car initial glance. I, you know, I'm a big fan of the F56 chassis anyway, now that it's electric. I guess one of my only concerns is there's really not much innovation going on here. It's pretty much i3 technology brought into a Mini. My point of view is, is this sort of like launching an iPhone 6 today and calling it new? I don't know. We're going to find out a lot about these things over the next couple days here of testing the Mini Electric. We're at, of course, our research center and track for inside EVs. And um, we'll be putting around the track, driving it on the road, charging it, and seeing overall impressions. So I'm excited. What are you looking forward to? What do you think? Well, you know, definitely looking forward to getting it on the track. And to your point about innovation, yeah, I think that that's a legitimate uh, complaint that you can have. You know, I've drove the Mini E 10 years ago, and while this is a more sophisticated car, has active thermal management, it has DC fast charge, uh, it has a smaller battery, it goes about... Oh, really? It is a smaller battery? Yeah, we had a 35 one. kilowatt hour battery, this is 32.6. Oh. Um, that said, with the active thermal management, with the heat pump, it has a heat pump, um, which makes it more efficient. Actually, the Mini folks told me that the heat pump system in this car is more efficient than the heat pump system in the i3. Oh, interesting. So that would be well, interesting another point test. about efficiency is on the drive down, you'll see a video on the Out of Spec channel. This car matched the efficiency of my Model 3. Yeah, which, which is, we were really surprised yeah, to see good. that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's really but, good. But in any event, where, where are we today? It's 2020, and this doesn't feel like it's 10 years of progress from my Mini E. So do I enjoy it? Yeah, it's a fun electric vehicle to drive. I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of uh, fun and a lot of electric miles out of this. But, uh, you know, I can't help but to wonder why this isn't that next generation yeah, leap. Yeah, this you know? is definitely uh, like a first generation, second generation EV type yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Nothing transformative. Conversion, it's not but a dedicated platform. It right. 
Well, that's the that's thing. That's the justification. So, so, that's the justification. So you can get this car with incentives. It might only cost you $20,000. Yeah, you're under 30, basically. When you do it that way, it is a great little EV for that kind of price. And oh, one yeah. of the things I want to point out, when we're talking about the range, not every electric vehicle has to be a 300 mile range electric I agree car. 100%. There's different uses, there's different needs. And one of the things that many brought up to me was that the average Mini owner has three or four vehicles in the household. Yep, I believe so it. So it's not even that it's their second car, it's their third or fourth. So every vehicle in the household doesn't need to be able to perform every task that you could ever need it to I do. I agree. So this does work, it's gonna work for a lot of people, and I think people are gonna like it. Yep, I 100%. So stay tuned to Inside EVs for more. Subscribe to the channel because we'll be putting this car on the road and track coming up over the next few videos. Thanks for watching.